Good morning on this last day of August 2018. Hello, I am Rena the Slow Knitter. I'm putting one of my hose on the um, on the sock hanger. Hey, I'm Rena. I'm the Slow Knitter um, from Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome. I'm gonna look at my notes because I did sort of a mini podcast yesterday, and it didn't come out well. So this is a redo. Of episode 33, which is Knitting in the Mountains and Cardi Cardigan Chaos. Yes, I'll explain. Anyway, um, I can be found on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook as the Slow Knitter. On Ravelry, I am the Slow Knitter ATL. And I have a podcast group on Ravelry. So stop by and um, I have a sock cal going on, a hat cal knit along going on. I give away prizes. It's fun. It's fun. But really, I just want to welcome back my subscribers to the podcast. Thank you for uh, your continued interest. And if you're new to this podcast, welcome. And I uh, hope that you subscribe. Just hit the subscribe button. Uh, down below if you are getting something out of this. Just fun. Um, I am a knitter. I don't do anything else. I knit. Uh, I knit lots of different things. I try. I'm sort of, I would say, an intermediate beginner level. Anyway, it's fun. Um, It's primarily a knitting podcast. I do do other crafting occasionally like embroidery, which I'm just is just getting back into and I just love it. Uh, anyway, let's talk about, um, I'm reading my notes because yesterday I rambled so much in this sort of trial podcast that it was like, I had to delete it. It was so bad. I had to delete it. So I thought, you know what? Get it together, woman. Write some notes. Follow. So this thing doesn't ramble forever. Although I, I have to say I did watch Amy from um, on her Stranded Knitting podcast and she was going on and on about all these things and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, let me talk about my knitting retreat in the North Georgia mountains, which is beautiful. It's about a two hour drive. I think her house is, I don't know where it's, is it Northwest or Northeast? I want to say it's Northwest. Uh, Georgia, North Georgia mountains. It's beautiful up there. It really is. And she hosted our first annual, because we're going to do it again, um, knitting retreat. And there were me, Michelle, Michelle and I hosted it, although it was at her house. So I, I made chili. I brought dinner fixings for the first night. Um, it was me and Teresa, uh, Michelle was there, obviously it's her house. Uh, Anne, no, no, it wasn't Anne. It was Melinda and uh, Judy. <sighs> Judy, who I've met before and I really just am a big fan of Judy's. She's a little bit of a very advanced knitter. I mean, she's taught She's a teacher by trade. She's taught fourth grade. She's taught all sorts of grades in private schools around town. I think she's retired now, but her last gig was at a public school in town. So she's a teacher by trade. And so she's also a knitter, a spinner, uh, really super talented and very natural teacher in that if anyone was struggling with something while we were away, while we were up there, she would just jump right in and either fix it or show you how to do it correctly, which was great because she helped me out of uh, a jam. So that was really good. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, but I have a little tale about a shawl that Michelle helped me finish. She, I was bemoaning the fact that I am leaning over to get it. I was bemoaning the fact that I, move the chair closer, move my props closer. I was bemoaning the fact that I had lost interest in the shawl that I wanted to knit for my niece, Courtney. And um, I don't know, you know, you have those projects where you, you go, 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 and I just dropped the shawl. Now I have to bend down and pick it up. Excuse me. It takes me a while to bend. Um, so I was bemoaning the fact that I really wanted to finish this shawl and I 
didn't, I wasn't getting around to it. And she said, well, let me finish it for you. I'll do it. I thought, oh my God, yes, let her finish it. So I said, okay, it's the first time I've ever shared a project with anyone. So I thought, okay, because I really want Courtney to have this shawl. And if I let it lay around anymore, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to be finished. So I went ahead and I let Michelle help me finish it. I think I did probably, uh, between a third and a half of it, maybe, but she really did the heavy lifting. I mean, she did, I brought it home, blocked it. Cause she's not, a, she gets uh, a little, she likes to have someone there when she's blocking. So I said, you know what, just give it to me. I like to block. And, uh, so she finished it. So I want to hold it up and show you. So one of the reasons why I was announced was to get the rain shawl. No, um, this was about it to pick up the rain shawl because I didn't know when she was going to be finished with it. Um, it's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's a really great pattern. Look at this shawl. It's done in Wolmise Wash Box. Where my shop? I don't know the colorway, but it reminds me of Courtney because she's of Irish descent and went to school in Ireland and. Her father owns a property in Ireland and she spends a lot of time there and just reminded me of Scotland and Ireland, the colors. But this rain and shawl really came out beautifully. And um, I'm gonna meet her for lunch today and hopefully she will love it. It's great. Stand up and let you look at it. It's so great. Oh, I'm matchy matchy. Um, Anyway, I'm so thrilled to finally give it to her. So today at lunch, I'm going to give it to Courtney. Christmas on the last day of August. Why not? Yeah, it's, I, you know, I might just wear this through the whole podcast. <laughs> it's just beautiful. I love it. I love it. Let me stand up. You know, I'm, I had a picture of Michelle wearing it at her home. She has such a beautiful home. Downstairs is like a whole apartment. Teresa and I stay downstairs and uh, Judy and Amanda stayed upstairs. Um, it was really a great, great weekend. Anyway, she helped me finish the shawl, which I'm going to give to Courtney. Um, and let me see, we had all sorts of plans for the weekend, which we actually did most of them. We went to Knitter's Niche, I'll tell you about that, which is a local yarn shop in Blairsville, Georgia, which is about 12 miles from Michelle's house. Um, we went, we had a picnic at a winery, and I'll, at the beginning of this um, podcast, there was a little bit of a trailer, and that was the um, photos from the event. We had... Um, we were gonna go out to dinner that night after the winery, but it was, so, it was so hot. We thought, let's just go back and crash and just graze. I mean, there was enough snacks and food everybody bought that there was enough food to graze. So we went back and we had pizza that Michelle made and we had hummus and we had leftover chili. It was a real mishmash, but it was delicious. <laughs> and we had wine at the winery and we brought home the bottles of wine. So it, w it was great. So it was very fun. It was. Bueno, bueno time. And we all agreed that we need to do it again probably before next fall, next summer. We probably should do one in the spring. And Judy has a mountain house. So maybe we'll go to Judy's house. I have a beach house. Maybe they can come down to the beach. <laughs> I don't know. It should be fun. Um, anyway, let me tell you about Knitter's Niche. Knitter's Niche is a great little shop in Blairsville, Georgia. They really have pretty fantastic yarns. There was, I'm going to lean over because I want to show you what I got there. Okay, Vocabulary Yarns, which is a local Atlanta indie dyer, um, had a trunk show there. And I picked up this gorgeous skein. You can see that's their logo. Vocabulary Yarns. I'm going to put a link to all this stuff. But look at this gorgeous skein that I bought. It's got this teal color. It's neutral gray. It's got a little bit of like a, I don't know, like a fuchsia in it. 
It's beautiful. And it is 90% superwash merino and 10% nylon. Now it could be a sock, but I think it would be a waste as a sock. Not that sock yarns aren't gorgeous, but I really see this, because it's mostly a neutral, I really see this as a sh part of a shawl. What part of a shawl? I don't know. I don't have any idea, but it's and squishy. You know, I can see knitting with this. Hmm. So that's what I bought at Knitter's Niche. It's vocabulary yarns, a skein. I, Andrea, who runs and owns Knitter's Niche, is just fantastic. And thank you, Andrea, for, for putting up with five women crawling around your yarn shop. Um, and uh, Andrea said, check my sales bin out. There's lots of stuff in there. So the girls were all checking it out and they pulled out one thing. I thought, what? How many? One of my favorite yarns that I've learned about this year is um, Barocco's Corsica, which is a cotton cashmere blend. I'm taking off the tab so you can see the blend. Anyway, um, the sticker is gone. <laughs> uh, Corsica. Rocco Corsica. And it is this gorgeous, sort of a seafoam green color. Now I'm making the Helen Stewart Pebble Beach shawl out of a Corsica. I'll show that to you in a minute. And I love working with it because it's got a great hand feel, even though it's cotton, it doesn't isn't stiff cotton. So it's great. And then Andrea said, well, I'll sell you this book too. I was like, no, I don't need it. She said, no, I'll give it to you 50%. <laughs> so these are a range of patterns in the, that Barocco has put out for, you know, for, to use Corsica yarn for. And this is the sweater that I will eventually do with this yarn. And I bought the same color just because I love it. And look at this shawl out of Corsica. It's pretty great. So if anybody wants details on the patterns that are listed in this book, just put a note below and I'll give you the information on where to find these patterns on Ravelry. Um, but I ended up buying eight skeins of this to do that sweater because they're only 150 yard yards of this but it's a really great great it was a great find and then everyone everyone was like rummaging through that and buying like four or five skeins of different colors of Corsica um, a lot of the lady I had my soul bound shawl that I've shown you before um, and on and uh, they were all like we want to do that shawl so they all purchased a pattern and uh, they were gonna do it out of Corsica, which is a sport weight kind of um, yarn, perfect for that uh, shawl, a soul bound shawl that I've done that uh, I use uh, Quince & Co's Willet, their cotton yarn, Willet. Now out of Corsica, I am doing, and this is in my Maria, Maria Elena Bliss bag which I've shown you before. It's a perfect size bag for um, a shawl. And this is what I'm knitting, the Pebble Beach shawl out of Corsica. And it's so squishy soft. And the size I'm using is somewhere between a, the size I'm doing of the shawl. This is the yarn, I'm, this is the color that I've chosen to do this. I learned about this yarn from Megan Fernandez of Pom Pom Magazine when she did a class on warm weather knits and just identified some cotton yarns that are really lovely to work with like Corsica, like Willet, and that's how I found out about these yarns. So I love doing that shawl. Of course, this is one of seven whips that I have. Anyway, so anyway, that's that was part of our a trip up to North Georgia. The other thing, I brought with me my Comfort Fade Cardi, and I'll talk about that in a minute. It's been a bit chaotic to work with, but I'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> That's my Cardi Chaos kind of 
part of this uh, thing. Plus, I have a story about Judy, our master knitter, friend, wonderful woman, who we found out is 38 days younger than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's younger. I was born on July 1st, she was August 8th or something like that. We are like, what year? Why? Um, she is a um, goodwill person. She loves to go to Goodwill to discover and find these different kind of unique things. Not my thing, but she does it. She loves it. Um, but let me, I will at the end tell you a story about a quilt that she found, that she discovered, which was amazing. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. I'm trying to, oh. So while I was at Knitter's Niche, she had Madeline Tosh Twist Light. I can't resist Madeline Tosh Twist Light. It's one of my favorite, favorite yarns. I'll show you what I'm doing with it. I got it in the Peat, P-E-A-T colorway, which is sort of a moody brown, um, speckled, variegated uh, yarn. And I just love it. I just, I, like looking over all these shelves, like I have that color, I have that, oh, what's that? So I seem to be into browns. I'm also into greens, I'm, you know, colors just change. I just like different colors for different things. Anyway, so I'll tell you a little bit about that. Uh, in the acquisition section. Now let me just look at my notes and make sure that I've talked about everything uh, that I want to talk about. Yes, okay. That's part one. Part two. Are you ready for my comfort fade cardi chaos? All right, I started the comfort fade cardi. All right, last year, Barnyard Knits, which is my one of my favorite indie dyers, uh, Canna Barnyard Knits was offering a kit for the com for Andrea Mowry's Comfort Fade Cardi. I was like, oh, I love it. It's sort of moody colors. And at the time that I bought it, I was, I love it. I want it. Yeah, that's perfect. So I bought it. Then somewhere mid-year, I thought, no. I mean, earlier in the year, I thought, no, I really don't want to do that. I think I'll just use the different DK yarns for hats and for different things. Then my friend Teresa, who you've heard me talk about, was hot on doing the Comfort Fade Cardi. Um, and she said, please do it with me. And I thought, okay, I will. I, I bought the kit, I might as well do it. I might as well jump in. This will be my second sweater, right? And the first sweater was the uh, Basic Raglan Pullover by Hohi. This is um, Andrea Maris. And, I, and I've seen Andrea Maris' pattern and she writes a really well-written pattern. I thought, okay, I, I might be able to do this. It has been trials and tribulations. First of all, the yarn is beautiful, okay? So it's not the yarn. The pattern is written so that the pearl side faces out, right? It's a reverse stockinette uh, pattern. Um... I don't like pearl side facing out for me. I like the knit side facing out, which I discovered. Uh, I did a swatch. It seems that I was the small size. I did the small size. Um, I have a fantastic knit group on Wednesdays. I tried it on as I went. They were like, yeah, that's the shoulders. Perfect. Uh, I said, it's going to be a little, you know, I'm a little curvy. I'm small on top, a little curvy on the bottom. I thought, well, I better, Maybe I should go to the medium. Then no, this just block it aggressively, and you know it'll come out. And it's really meant to be open. It's not a closed cardigan, and it's sort of meant to go like that. Uh, because and there's a huge shawl collar on it. I will say that the shawl collar is like knitting a whole other sweater. So um, I'll show it to you. I'm so afraid of losing the stitches that I'm. So again. A lot of the comfort cardies that I've seen, and the one that Teresa's doing, has more has more pastel-y colors or more uh, difference in, you can see distinctly the difference in the fade. This one, not as distinct. It blends more. Uh, Teresa's is beautiful. She picked hers up at Wool and Honey in uh, outside of Traverse City, Michigan. She contacted Andrea Mowry. She's, she was at, up in, she was going up to the Travis City area to see one of her dogs being uh, shown. 
and she asked Andrea Maurer which yarn store she should stop in and Andrea recommended wool and honey which is just and she picked me up a cute little lotions pouch and a great cowl pattern which I'm not, I'm not going there yet I, I love it though so I'm gonna show you as long as I don't lose my stitches my comfort cardi So this is the right side is the pearl side facing out. I just prefer the knit side facing out. I, it's my sweater, I guess. I can wear it the way I want to. And I prefer the knit side facing out. I, I, I feel like I have it on backwards with the pearl, but so many I've seen are so great. And, and uh, Andrea up at knit, Knitter Snitch had a few on display and she said, no, the pearl side really shows the fading uh, better than the knit side. In my case, that's not true um, because these don't, this is the knit side and you can still see the fading pretty much all the way down. So I don't agree. So it's my sweater. I'm going to wear it how I want to wear it. The um, cup on the sweater is also supposed to be faded. I did not fade the cup. Um, the reason I did not fade the cup, I started to fade it. In fact, I have a picture which I'll insert here of my undoing of the cup because as I was fading it, it was, I had just done a sloppy job. I was just not doing a good job. So I thought, you know what? I don't really care. I'm over this fading. I'm just going to do it in color number four. And I did. And I think it came out fine. And it's garter as opposed to stockinette. So, you know, this is a sleeve. It's faded. The sleeve is all faded. And um, I just decided not to fade the cuff. Teresa is fading the cuff. Hers looks great. Um, the shulk. Okay, first Cardi, right? I am not adept at picking up stitches. So Sarah English, my friend Sarah English Perry, um, who is a great designer, by the way, a knitwear designer. I will show you at the end some of the um, stuff that she's designed. Um, she help me uh, pick up two, skip one, pick up one, skip one, pick up two. She helped me um, understand how to pick up because I had to pick up 126 on one side, 52 around the collar, 127, 304 stitches around the whole circumference of the um, cardigan. I did it um, and started to knit it. It's garter, thank goodness, because this girl's hand and purling, I don't know, too much purling really puts my hands in a little bit of a crimp and a little bit of bind. But, um, so she helped me pick up, she helped me outline how to pick up the stitches, which is great. I did it. And the Cardi is now being, the shawl collar is now being put on. So you have to fade the shawl collar with, it's four colors, and you have to fade the shawl collar, and there are short rows, and I'm doing German short rows for this, which is great. I love doing German short rows. So um, that's, I'm so afraid of losing <laughs> my, little, my little stoppers on so I don't lose the thing. So now I'm on, so you fade, Two rows of the current color, two rows of the new color, one row with the color. Anyway, three and four stitches. Then you do a, then you do the short rows, which you have to repeat 13 times. Then you fade into the other color. Then you do the short rows again 13 times. Then you fade into the third color and do the short rows 13 times. Then you fade into the fourth color and do. So it's big and it's like knitting a whole other sweater. So I'm gonna take my time. I'm enjoying this part of it simply because it's. Um, garter and short rows and I don't mind that. The problem is the weight of the sweater with my wrists so I have to have a pillow under me to hold the sweater while I'm knitting it. But at this point it will just fit into my rotation. I am not going to be, um, I'm still going to do it. I'm not going to be uh, stressed out about having to finish it. I don't have to finish, there's no deadline. Uh, anyway, 
Moving on to what am I working on now section. Whoops. Okay, well, I have a hoe. Um, so it's the Hermione Everyday Sock. And this yarn was dyed for, well, after a picture I posted of my house by the beach in Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, and it was dyed by Sheila Pinkston of Bigfoot Fiber. I love it. It's really wonderful to work on. I did my afterthought heel, uh, Judy's Magic Cast On for the Toe, the Toe Up. And the pattern is a really great pattern. I think it's a free pattern on Ravelry. So here's my Hermione's Everyday Sock, number one. Sorry. Sock number two is, I'm getting ready for the placement yarn for the Afterthought Heel right now. And away we'll go. And so I hope to have a complete set of socks soon. There you go. There's whip number one. Well, it's a whip and a half, right? A hoe and a whip. Anyway, the other sock that I'm working on, because I just love, when I saw this pattern, I was like, oh, I love that pattern. It's a little interesting. To me, a vanilla sock is great. It just doesn't really hold my interest, and I, a pattern holds my interest a little bit more. So I'm working on Tracy Miller, who is Tracy of Grocery Girls. I'm working on her Galliano sock pattern. And this little cabling, sorry for my progress keeper. This little cabling, there's some eyelets. It's a fun pattern. I'm doing it in um, wool and vine yarns in the, um, in her footsie base. Wool and vine, in case you have never seen her label. It's a BFL nylon. It's not, mm, why am I buzzing out? Focus camera. There you go. Um, it's not great hand, soft, soft, but it's a sturdy BFL nylon. It's a great pattern. And um, this is the pattern. So I'm having fun. I'm liking it a lot. Um, and it's being held in my, let's see, my Lowlands original sock bag, which from Renee in Amsterdam. And I love her sock bags. I love any of her bags, actually. They're really sturdy, and she has a real great um, way with fabric choices. See, inside, so pretty. It's pretty, this bag. I love it. All right, while I was in the mountains, I rediscovered a whip. Here's a little lesson about whips. If you put away your whip four months or for a year and you get it back out, it's possible that you lose your rhythm with it. I love this pattern. I love this project. I don't know why I kept putting it away. I really don't, but I did. Uh, it is the Vila Wrap by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. I have three Helen Stewart shawls on the needles right now. Yeah, Helen Stewart knitter, me. Um, this is the Vila Wrap. It's done in three different yarns, obviously three different bases. You have Malabrigo Finito, which is, I'm a big fan of that, in the Plomo colorway. That's the gray. And look how it, you can look at it down here. It goes from light to dark. It's just pretty wonderful. And I just love the hand feel of that. Madeline Tosh Twist Light is the um, whitish, it's in the antler colorway. And this beautiful, purple-ish yarn was dyed um, by Sheila Pinkston again of Bigfoot Fiber. Uh, and it's like a what, lily, watercolor lily colorway. Doesn't it remind you of that? 
it's fantastic and that's the lace part of this now when i picked it up again i lost my complete rhythm of the chevroning i mean i don't what it the chevrons were going this is good i have no idea what the heck i was doing or why i was doing that and so judy at our knitting retreat helped me get back on track we kept tinking back tinking back finally she just tinked back to the lace and said here get it on the needles and let's count how many stitches you're supposed to have and she got me right and I'm doing it. So here's a lesson that I'm doing anyway for my Vila wrap is i um, going to pick it up every couple of days, knit a few, knit four or five rows, put it back down, but I'm not going to let go of it, go of it. When I get to the lace, next lace section, because the wrap, and I'll put a link to the pattern below, the wrap has several of these lace, lace sections as you go up. So I'll do this section of chevroning and then I'll do a whole other section of lace. Then a whole other section of chevroning. I mean, it's a long wrap. Um, I got some help from one of Helen's moderators on her, um, in her Ravelry group about how to shorten it because it's so long. I don't really need something that long. So she gave me a suggestion on how to shorten it, which is great. So I'll be doing that. Being held in my fabulous fringe supply bag, which is the perfect size for me uh, for this project. All right, let me see. What else was I going to show you? Oh, um, as you know, when I went to the Savannah knit for, knit, knitting retreat with Ann Bud and family, um, she included a free pattern and a skein of yarn in her goodie bag from Copper Corgi, who is a local dyer in Savannah. And I'm working on the... Um, her Savannah Trees shawl pattern using Copper Cog Corgi in her State Street Sport Base. And it is um, in the Moss and Leaves colorway. Look how this thing is pooling. Look how the yarn and the colors are. It's, this is a potato chippy kind of knit. Um, there's just, one round of cables and I think you can see the cable right there and then it's just knit and at the end of it you drop all the pearl stitches and I don't know if I'm going to do that or not I'll see what the end looks like but it's really enjoyable it's an enjoyable knit and um, I like to bring this when I'm with my knit gang or you know sort of it doesn't take a lot a whole lot of concentration particularly since there's like six rows of knit four pearl one, like six of them, then cable, then knit four pearl one, like forever. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. And um, this is also being held in one of my Marina Elena Bliss project bags. And I'll put a link to her shop below. Okay. What else? Oh, <laughs> I wanted to show you. Okay. Uh, you know how you go through phases of color? Okay. This girl, for some reason, is in a brown phase. I was in the green phase, as you can see from the Galliano socks and the, the cowl, both greens. Uh, I was been in a pink phase. <laughs> now, for some reason, I'm in sort of earth tone. Well, the sweater is is very earth tony, um, and I wanted to get away from that, but no, I went right back to it. All right, so. I'm getting up because I'm showing you the the peat colorway that I bought this Madeline Tosh twist light that I got up at Knitter's Niche. I wound it because it just was. This is the peat colorway. Okay, it's got some orange in it and browns and beiges and it is rich, just rich looking. So of course I came home and I had to wind it right away. Why? Uh, because I can. And I have a theory with my friend Sarah English that the reason you cast on, don't call it cast on itis, call it queuing for the next project. When you finish a project, you've already set yourself up to start one that you have on the needles. I can justify anything. 
particularly when I have a friend who has the same issue. Um, so I was looking around, looking around, and I noticed that I had a shawl in my queue that I really have really wanted to knit for a while now because it's sort of a smallish shawl, which works for me because I'm little. Um, and it's another Helen Stewart shawl. I am the Helen Stewart shawl knitter. Um, and it's called the Rune Shawl. And this was from her Shawl Society too. Um, so I cast it on. Of course I cast it on. Why wouldn't I cast it on? I'll put a link to the pattern below. It's not really showing up here, but uh, maybe I should hold it this way. This is the peat colorway, how it's knitting up. It's really beautiful. Anyway, I was like, okay, it's a second color. Let me look at my stash. What else do I have? Barnyard knits in the sweet berry colorway. You see it's blowing out a little bit. Sweet berry colorway. Look at these two together. Perfect. Perfect. Same kind of shades of orangey and beige and browns in here and the sweet and Kim has just a way with dyeing that's very unique and that's why I bought the comfort cardigan kit from her um, but this sweet berries colorway is really pretty special I love it uh, and it goes really well with um, the peat yeah so some someday one day <laughs> And it wasn't one of, Helen Stewart has a tendency to go really, really long with her shawls. This is being held in my uh, Laughing Stitches uh, project bag by Nancy. And I have a couple of her project bags. And again, I love draw, anything drawstring. Give me a good drawstring and I'm happy. Uh, so that's Ruth. <laughs> Shawl number 74 on the needles. Because I can, I'm a little not focused. But what else is now? Anyway, <laughs> um, so that's it. Then uh, I went out and bought. Of course, I bought. Oh, well, you don't need to see it. I bought some new artistic lily, which looks like the colors of that. The same browns and beige and tans. It's beautiful. And I will make something of it. Something. I did see one of the browns made out of socks. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll do socks. I don't know. I don't, you know, it might make... Tracy has another pa sock pattern out called Coffee Talk or something. And it's um, a little bit of a fade. Oh, I'm so sick of fade. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm... I'm uh, like have fade overdose from that cardigan. Ah. Anyway, so I did, I did buy two artistic lily colorways. Probably shouldn't have. Let's see. What's this from? Oh. So, misplaced <laughs> things. All right. So, let me see. Let me talk about some things that I've been up to. I'm, I'm for the last month, six weeks or so, I've been knitting every Wednesday with this group of women who are extremely talented um, sweater knitters. I aspire to be one of them one day. Um, but they are helping me a lot with things like the sweater that I have now and some techniques that they do. One of them is a knitwear designer. Her name is Sarah English Perry. And follow her on IG if, if you're on Instagram. Give her a follow. Um, she's also on Ravelry. She's a knitwear designer. She's designed a lot of cowls. She's recently designed the cutest, most adorable baby hats. And I will put a link to the pattern on Ravelry below. Uh, and she's got some test knitters that have done uh, a great job. Uh, also, her other designs are like really beautiful cowls. and So check her out uh, and uh, give her a follow on Instagram. So she's, uh, I just saw she's also going to do some baby socks. This is, somebody's having to knit along with baby socks. And it'll be really great with her cute little baby hats, um, which is a, a knotted 
little top. It's the cutest thing. Cute. So, hey Sarah English, um, and give her a ball because she's got some really great things. Uh, all right, let me tell you about Judy's quilt discovery. Um, Judy, who was with us at the knit retreat. Uh, she likes to go to Goodwill to find fabrics and find yarns and all that. I'm not that, I have a little bit of like confusion when I go into those places. I'm like, I don't know where to look first. She knows where to look, how to look for it. She's a professional in this area. So she's looking through, and I'm gonna put some pictures here. She's looking through and she sees this quilt that's all rolled up, rolled up. And in, in the corner of the quilt, it says 1981. She thinks it says 1981. So she can't really see it, but she's like, ah, uh, you know, I'll, I'll get it. It was $2, two, two, one, two dollars. She gets home, she unravels it. It isn't 1981, it's 1931. It's embroidered, it's applique, it's super well done. It's like a for a baby. So it's A to Z and every letter box has a, uh, a thing. So M is for music and there's a musical note and it's all applique and embroidered. Turn it over and there is embroidered a name of the family. And then down the side mirrored embroidery are the names of children and the year they were born. Okay, so we were sitting around imagining who did this, how they did it, where is the family? We figured that someone passed away and just emptied out the attic and they took it away and they gave it to Goodwill. And here is this amazing treasure um, from somebody. So we have two names. Rasmussen and Hendrickson, and then the children's names and the year they were born, embroidered, hand embroidered, mirrored embroidered. So you have John 54, John 54, like this. I've got some pictures included. It was amazing to see that as part of our, our knit weekend. She also gave us, I'll get up and show you. She gave each of us a spindle. And some roving. She attempted to show Teresa how to spin and afterwards on the drive home Teresa said, I don't think that's for me. But she, Judy insisted on giving us all a little packet of things and so I'll be YouTubing on how to do this. And I know a lot of my friends on Instagram and on YouTube do it. I don't know. You know, something else just to try and, and fool around with. I also, as you know, I posted this, I'm doing embroidery. So Leah Tebow of Ms. Cleaver on Instagram, who um, is one of the great minds behind that beautiful yarn, um, had a set. And again, this is a childhood memory of mine. I think I mentioned it. But these are three ladies watching the water. I haven't knit her hat yet. I've done her outline. I'll tell you, it's really fun. And it's gonna look like this when it's done. I'm not there yet, obviously. But it's fun discovering different types of stitches and um, it's, it's a lot of fun to have that. Embroidery hoops. And I got a little jacked up on the yarn, so I made my own little yarn, I mean, floss keeper. <laughs> I think, apparently there are little bobbins that you wrap this yarn around. I just go to Michael's and pick some up and get some in the meanwhile. It's in a, a really crappy folder. <laughs> so I keep track of all the floss. Embroidery thread is called floss. I also had to get myself a needle threader because I was like, I can't thread the thought. Um, and now I know how to use that and I'm, see some more floss that I'm, I haven't, I'm going to lose it. Anyway, I'm into this. I like it as a break from knitting. Um, it's fun. I'll have a little embroidered picture that I'll 
um, that I'll put in my beach house. I don't know, it's fun. It's fun. Um, I like it. I also saw on Instagram, Brooklyn Haberdashery has some kits of embroidery as well, beginner's kits, that's me. Um, and I, I ordered one. Because I wanna finish this, I wanna do that one. And it's sort of a Mandela design, which is beautiful. And um, yeah, I hope to get that in the mail very soon. It's Friday, August 31st. It's the Friday before Labor Day weekend. Happy Labor Day weekend, everybody. Labor Day honors in America. It honors the American worker. Um, so we are celebrating with a long weekend. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. So everyone have a great, everyone in the U.S. have a great Labor Day weekend. Sort of like a bank holiday kind of weekend for those of us who are not, for those of you who are not in the U.S. Um, it's a long weekend. A lot of people go, it's their last beach weekend. It's mountains weekend. It's really beautiful. It's fun. And I like to stay in town um, because it's sort of a, a, a quiet weekend in town. And I like when it's quiet in town. I do. Uh, so my friend Carol is recovering from some surgeries. So I'll probably pay her a visit. Love you, Kat. And um, just hang out. Not do very much. Maybe meet my friend Laura, from, who's Trixie Knits on IG for coffee. Just hang out, go to dinner somewhere fun, um, and have. We always have a barbecue, so we'll have a barbecue, whatever Bob wants. And the barbecue is fine with me. Uh, all right, love you all, and thank you for stopping by. And welcome to my new viewers. Welcome to, uh, welcome back to my subscribers. Have a great Labor Day weekend, and uh, everyone be safe. And I'll see you on the other side. Bye.